Welcome to Rip to Shreds, and today we are ripping Alien Romulus to shreds. Um, <laughs> I just like to start off with just saying, spoiler warning: we will be going through the movie uh, plot point by plot point. We will be discussing everything about this movie. So if you haven't watched this movie, please press pause and come back and watch it after you've seen the movie because you will know everything about this movie after we are done. Well, mostly everything. You some stuff we probably missed, but uh today All we have our loyal, details. Yeah. <laughs> today we have our loyal panelist, Brandon. Disney. And little Jojo Josiah. <laughs> um so usually with Rip to Shreds we start off with a little little trivia. So um I'll start and then we'll just go around the room. Around the virtual room. Um, so one of the most interesting things on trivia that I found out is that this was supposed to be a Hulu premiere. It was supposed to follow the same steps as Prey. Mm -hmm. um, Which was also a mistake for Prey, I'll point out. Yeah, that yeah. was. Yeah, so it was supposed to come out, I think, last uh, year, about a year ago. I don't know the exact day, but um, it just shows that uh, Hulu has a good track record with uh, producing some of these movies or, you know, deciding to premiere these movies because uh, Prey was great. It was, you know, basically bringing Predator back to where it began. And same thing now with Alien Romulus is, you know, it's bringing it back to where it began a straight horror sci-fi, which is something I think it dearly missed and it was going too much in the Aliens direction of uh, kind of like a action horror sci-fi film. Yes, um, even though I, I think most people prefer Aliens over Alien, but I'm not one of those. No, neither am I. But uh, let, let us not uh, pretend that this movie doesn't have its uh, its uh, plasma rifle action scenes and yeah, uh, yeah. gravity-defying kind of stunts. Um, it's, got a, it's got a mixture, and I think Fede Alvarez even said the first half is supposed to mimic uh, you know, the original 79 film and then the second uh, hour is more akin to um to aliens in terms of the um the energy and the pace of it mm -hmm. so um but he but it seems like he kind of like wrangled it and controlled the action of it you know he used it when it was needed and didn't try to like you know oversaturate it with action when i think sometimes you know people get so enamored with the action that they lose out with all the story beats that you know a movie needs to be successful yeah, and like it, it's like it's an a, it's a, a horror film that has action moments. It doesn't the action mm -hmm. doesn't overtake it. It's still a hundred percent is a horror movie. Yeah, so. yeah. and I think the um, the kind of the ex additional climax, the extended climax, helps take us back to the um, the horror more fully, and uh, it allows us to kind of have that. Uh, action climax and then the uh further horror climax to the film yeah this was yeah. definitely one of those those films where i was like all right we're settling back in this is the end you know they're flying off everything's going well and then bam we're hit with the next you know mm -hmm. next uh act yeah it just it seemed like, like a, very felt like it formatted it was like all like, the other alien movies that's for sure definitely Kind of like it, that whole tacked on, like you feel safe for a moment, but then you get hit with that horror. Yeah, and I thought for a sec they were going to do what they did with Alien Covenant, where they have a very dour, almost cliffhanger, but they chose to uh, yeah. just have the movie resolve on a on a high note. I probably would have preferred a cliffhanger, if I'm being honest. Um, but we'll <laughs> yeah. get into that in a second. Uh, well, we get somewhat of a cliffhanger. A little, little yeah. bit, a little, little tiny bit. Doesn't, eh, whatever, cliffhanger, you know. Um, as yeah. far as trivia, a um, little piece of trivia that I have is uh, apparently uh, when Fetty Alvarez showed uh, Ridley Scott the film, um, I don't remember the exact quote, but he's like, "It's great, love it." Um, I think maybe he said the f word or something. Um, yeah, yeah, he did. That, <laughs> yeah. That's Ridley Scott. He doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. Um, but he did say it was too long, though. Yes, correct. And uh, so that was the one advice that he gave him: is you got to tighten it up. And uh, for that, I'll say 
fuck you, Ridley Scott. It would have been better if it was like just longer, honestly. I don't <laughs> think it needed to be tightened up at all. Like, yeah. Mm-mm. There's one moment specifically that I feel strongly I could be wrong, and this is kind of going into synopsis, but I'm going to be brief, uh, mm-hmm. where I felt like something was cut, something was missing, was there's this establishing moment that felt contrived to me in the current edit and the beginning where Andy uh, is one of the characters and he gets just attacked by some random children and then, oh, he's bleeding the milk blood. It's because he's an android. We have to establish this immediately. Uh, and it's just like, it, it just cuts from these kids surrounding him, cuts inside, then cuts back and they're beating him up. And I truly believe there's some kind of scene that is missing there that they just said, we don't, I mean, I'm not saying it was good or anything, but I'm just saying like, I feel at some point they were like, well, we don't need this. They, the point is they beat him up, and we see that he's an android. And I feel like that's one of those scenes that probably got cut, because that's right at the yeah. beginning of the film. I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something to do with the other character and his hate for androids with the whole mining yeah. incident and everything. And, oh, mm-hmm. my God, my light just died. Let me plug it in. <laughs> What's our next piece of trivia? Josiah, oh. you said you had something, right? <laughs> uh, no, I got, I got, I got, I got plenty. I got, got loads. Um, Give me some. Uh, well, this film actually takes place. You know, this is the first uh, kind of interquel uh, between the Alien movies because we have the original four. We got AVP one and two, which is a crossover prequel duology, and then Ridley Scott didn't finish his trilogy yet, but he did two prequels. This is the first time we've had a movie set between Alien and Aliens, because I believe that's about a 70-year gap. So the game Alien Isolation, which was an inspiration to Fede, and then this movie take place in that time gap between the first and second movie, which reminded me of another franchise that did that recently, which was Saw. Um, Yeah. uh, Yeah, it's, it's it's the new thing. Uh, there was the the prequels were ginormous. The reboots were ginormous. Uh, then it was the uh, let's pretend the sequels didn't happen. This is mm-hmm. number two uh, yeah. sequel, um, and just like scrub the timeline. And now it's the sequels did happen, but this is in between them. So yeah. this is the the new uh, meta of uh, of. Hollywood films on the rise. <laughs> so. On the little bits so, and you know, in between each movie. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it can tie more into like loose, like loose threads from the the original, and then kind of lead into the second one that people also really like. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, yeah. I guess, I guess the next bit, could, bick, bick, the next bit of trivia. Sorry, I don't have a pen. I was talking about a bick, but next bit of trivia that uh, I'd like to talk about is uh, how Fede Alvarez said that he would love to direct a crossover film with Dan Trackenberg between Prey and Alien Romulus. Yes. And I feel like that'd be super dope. That would be be very dope. And... I would be 100% down for another AVP film if they yeah. actually set it with Colonial Marines, like the initial <laughs> idea of AVP from the get-go with the comic books and everything. And, like, yeah. and the games. The Yeah, and the games. Like the Aliens vs. Predator games are actually so much fun, uh, depending on the game modes and everything. Uh, and the fact that the movies were just... Oh, modern day. We're not going to have colonial marines. It's not going to be interesting. It's just going to be aliens and, and predators. People. One of them, you can see them, and then there's a sequel that's just too dark to see anything. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> man. I mean, and I do actually like the first AVP movie. Uh, it's not bad. It's, yeah. I, w- I wish that they made that film with the intention of this is a rated r film and instead there's the unrated version which is you know it's it's r light it's like it's barely any different um story-wise it's better uh but 
Um, I, I do I do appreciate the initial AVP film, the sequel. I do have appreciation for the sequel, probably a little bit more than others, but it still is loaded with problems. <laughs> the thing with the AVP movie is it, it came out during that time where, you know, big studio Hollywood was like, we need to make as much money with this, you know, licenses that we have. We need to make it PG-13 so everybody can go, that everybody can watch it, mm-hmm. you know. That was a terrible, terrible dark time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad we're, like, we're, we're starting to come out of it. I mean, that yeah. the, it still has lingers, but especially with the success of Deadpool and Wolverine uh, now crossing a billion dollars, like, see... People will watch it no matter the rating as long as it's uh, it has a good reason to watch it. Except they're going to see it as people will go watch it if it's funny. There's that too. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. That was the only reason I cared about Deadpool Wolverine because it was funny. So. <laughs> that is, that is, yeah. Uh, some more stuff. Uh, I think we mentioned before the podcast started. Uh, the film was shot chronologically to... You know, the classic, we're going to preserve your uh, reactions as actors. You won't do the goodbye and then have to do the, uh, you know, palling around as friends scenes after. You will get to go on your arc as the film is shot, you know, and that has its benefits. Um, And the release of uh, Alien Romulus uh, is the 45th anniversary of the original 1979 film, which is cool. Interesting. We're almost to the 50th. Wow. Mm. Maybe we'll get that AVP movie on the 50th. That might be cool. I mean, that would yeah, be dope. That would be pretty dope. Um, the uh, other piece of trivia that actually connects to uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, mm-hmm. uh, much like Deadpool disrespected the corpse of Logan, a fictional character, uh <laughs> Alien Romulus oh. disrespects the corpse of a actual actor who is dead. Um, the character's name is Ash. I forget. It's Bilbo. The Ian the, Holm. Ian, yeah, Ian Holm. Holm. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with a monstrosity flat CGI oh. face. Uh, <laughs> this. This was a mistake. Yeah. Um. I. I think. I think. When I look at the people who love this movie, the defenses for this are very weak. Um. This is going to be a huge factor in people's consideration, in my opinion. What I genuinely don't understand is what I heard about the background with it is like Fede Alvarez actually talked to the family and got their permission and being like a, you know, honor his memory, yada yada. It's like, okay, that kind of sounds like you actually had time to plan this out properly. Why does it not yeah. look like, and it looks like you uh, CGI'd that like within a couple months before you had to release it. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't mean to moralize, and I know it's, you know, I'm not trying to like criticize the family, but this is this is something that I I really want us to consider is that as we recreate dead people with AI with CGI, should we even should if if they themselves do not sign over the rights, should the family even be allowed to do something like this? Like I understand like selling memorabilia or or auctioning off stuff or releasing memoirs but recreating them for performance purposes and franchises like should this be allowed where the family can just say yep we're gonna take the paycheck by using our dead (laughs) relatives face and and likeness like uh james earl jones he signed his darth vader voice to disney but that's his consent to the future of what's going to happen, but Ian Holm didn't consent no. uh, to be ghoulishly recreated. Exactly. So. Yeah. Or that he probably had no idea that he would ever be in another Alien movie. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was like, I was, just, yeah. yeah and I don't understand why they just didn't go with Lance Henriksen, you know, he's still alive. He was yeah. Bishop. Or, or yeah. even Michael Fassbender, which would have been, yeah. Honestly, that would have yeah. been pretty cool. I would have gotten real excited if it was Michael Fassbender. Because then, I, I, cause, I thought it might have been it for a moment. Like, yeah, no, exactly. I could tell they were hiding his face. I was like, uh oh, this is gonna be a reveal. He's wearing the Ash outfit. Uh oh, yeah. and uh, I was like, 
be be something cooler, be something cool. I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Like at first, I was like, oh, look at that. I was like, oh, look at that. They, 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 they purposely kept showing it in like bright light. I'm like, this is the time mm-hmm. when you use shadows. Yeah, I know, like, right? Well, the, the rest of the film is cast in shadow, except yeah. for the most important part. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah, thought it was smart that they used at the end when they started using them on a uh, like video, yeah, video feed and stuff. I'm like, okay, that's yeah, smart. that, that looked right. just I, fine. I, mm-hmm. yeah. I understand they needed to get his chip, but why couldn't they have just had him on the screen of the computer and then his chip like pops out of the PC or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. like I feel like there was ways around this that didn't involve. Well, yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah. It was because they connected them to the ship, anyways. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think so it was just... it was definitely cool to have like the corpse of this AI there, but just not the corpse of this actual actor that's dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, I I think I I know Fetty Alvarez direct defended this by saying like, well, Bishop got you know a couple movies and uh, um, David got a couple movies, so um, I think it was time. I think actually uh, Ridley Scott suggested that Ash should come back because he was the best one because it's from my original movie. Um, and it's like, I am I was really surprised that Ridley Scott didn't just say, hey, you know how I didn't get to make my third prequel movie? Make it Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, no, I that, think that, that might have been the best choice. But then the, th- the thing, yeah, that's the thing is if it was Michael Fassbender, then you could argue that that was the David synthetic Mm -hmm. and look and you see the verdict of the the cliffhanger of he brought the aliens up there and then he got messed up and Uh and and died as a result it's like oh we got resolution to the david story would have been perfect honestly uh yeah i i i don't i i know they they're like did this weird thing where they pulled back so there was two there was kind of two potential alien projects before this came out it was neil blomkamp's alien 5 which was going to be like a halloween 2018 like retro reboot where it's um you know ripley comes back and they were gonna it would have been been another one of wipe the slate clean yeah this is the real sequel and then there was scott's third prequel which was going to be alien which is essentially going to be David, like, uh, becoming Satan, essentially. And then this movie comes along, and Ridley Scott's producing it. And it, it initially, it seems like they're pulling back, but they make a point of having the mutagen, having the black goo from Prometheus, having the hybrid at the end look like an engineer. Like, they didn't they didn't ignore the prequels. It's not like they're Ooh. not trying to remind you of them. So it's weird yeah. that they didn't just pull the trigger and and tie up this david storyline here like i think it would have worked honestly yeah for sure yeah. and like i i'm a, definitely a defender of the prequels um yeah. i think that prometheus is pretty dope it's just very different uh and then alien yeah. covenant i like i get it as far as like uh there was no proper precautions made by these scientists and also why did they stop there to begin with they're transporting all the you know to start like a new civilization somewhere and everything yeah there's a lot of like logistical things but you know if you just accept that i think it's a it's a pretty fun movie uh any everything that is involved with the aliens themselves in it is great i freaking love everything with michael fassbender in both prometheus and alien covenant so it does kind of bum me out that we didn't get that third uh, to cap off the trilogy with uh, Michael Fassbender. Um, but we this still is good. could, but um, yeah, maybe he's a missed the old. He's getting, he's getting the older. older. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think the third film was supposed to connect the bridge, the uh, Covenant and Alien, Alien together. Yeah. Yeah. Which has which has problems, but we're not going to go into the yeah. continuity of why in the first movie is the what we find out is not a skeleton but a suit. Why is it fossilized for ten thousand years? If David, th- there's this whole weird thing with the Alien franchise where, oh, a- Ridley Scott's like Alien made the uh, sorry, David made the Alien. He made the Xenomorph, and it's like, but that totally doesn't work with the first movie at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
but it's this issue where it's he's recreating it now. anyway yeah but um uh some other trivia uh just real quick uh, apparently fede used a remote control soundboard uh, connected to loudspeakers to spook the cast during shooting, and he had like alarms and xenomorph sounds and stuff. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, what do you guys think about the? Obviously, it's the film's called Romulus. There's the Romulus Remus stations. Obviously, that's Roman mythology. How Rome was founded. Mm -hmm. uh, they were nursed by a wolf. Um, and uh, we kind of get that parallel with the offspring at the end, basically going in for breast milk or whatever. Yeah. Um, then there's all this stuff in their movie about, like, siblings. Like, there's, uh, you know, um, Andy and Rain as siblings. Um, Rook, Ian Holm, is kind of a sibling to Ash from the first movie. Um, you know, there's... There's kind of the two halves that combine to make the hybrid at the end. Mm -hmm. I I think I, I you know I I I'm not sure. Do you guys think that that thematic through line worked as like the center point to it? You know it it's like one of those things like you know it it feels like he was almost like talking about how you know as siblings you know, we have the opportunity to either connect or betray each other, you mm -hmm. know? And so we saw different portions of the story where humans as a brotherhood were betraying each other for uh, each other's survival. And then you have the one uh, set of siblings that, you know, never really betrayed each other, except for Andy at one point, he never really betrayed her, but he had a directive that was forcing him from keeping his uh his original directive of protecting uh rain mm -hmm. so it's almost like he was telling you know the story of the uh romulus and remus but instead of giving us the ending that we we all know of the betrayal of the siblings he gave us a you know a happy happy ending yeah you know, a more or, hopeful take on more it. hopeful take yeah mm -hmm. i love getting a happy ending not gonna lie <laughs> it's it's true. We need we need more um more endings that actually the characters triumph. <laughs> you <Yes>. know. Um <laughs> and I agree. I think this for me the strongest aspect of the film was the relationship between Rain and Andy because they had a legitimate char character arc and redemption was needed for both parties and they both um achieved it in a yeah. sense. Um, so I think that's the strongest uh, through line that the film has, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like, like it, it even like I was just thinking about the 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 story of the, you know of Romulus and Remus. You know, Ash basically was like the uh, I can't remember who it exactly was, but the person that like you know sent them off and tried to like break them apart. I can't remember. Uh, um, or not Ash, uh, Rook in this story. Yeah. So he kind of mimicked the Greek mythology with the two <clears throat> characters, which was pretty interesting. Yeah. Because they were off to, they got, in the end, you know, they kind of went off on their own to, you know, start a new life, you know. Whereas yeah. we didn't get that at the end of, you know, our Roman <clears throat> mythology because uh, one of the brothers betrayed the other by being, mm -hmm. you know, I think it was out of jealousy. I can't remember what it was. Or was it out of, I can't remember if it was out of jealousy or they were fighting over which hill to, you know, build Rome on. That's, yeah, that was, that was a big aspect of it. Yeah. Um, some other stuff, obviously, like we all saw the scene where um, uh, the actress Eileen Wu got the face hugger on her and there's this really gnarly shot of it getting pried off with the long proboscis coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, Apparently, she said, obviously, that was really taxing because they had to, like, essentially fill the lube, like, and she'd have to spit it out after a take, and they'd have to fill it up again. And so, like, 
wild man you know that Ooh. that's that's pretty hardcore <laughs> on her part yeah definitely <laughs> yeah. props to her for that that's yeah. hard yeah like, Yeah, so a yeah. lot of people don't even like tubes being put in their throat for like uh, surgeries cool. and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Who would? Um, but okay. Uh, any other pieces of trivia? Um, this. Oh, before the podcast started, um, when Andy's playing the video game, apparently it says "Game Over, Man." Yeah. Um. That's a reference to aliens. Yeah, apparently they had so many like quotes from several alien movies. They did. And yeah, they did. Uh, I missed a bunch of them. I I did not yeah. like. Yeah, I didn't really recognize any of it almost, except for the obvious. Uh, Get away from her, you bitch. Um, <laughs> and then Rook said, "I won't lie to you about your chances," yeah, which yeah, is yeah. from the first movie in the moment yeah. i just didn't remember that so mm -hmm. um but yeah the the one thing with the get away from her you bitch thing is like <laughs> i almost feel like there was a little bit of background to him saying bitch in that way that was uh like part of what was cut you know uh because mm -hmm. it was like it had um, oh, like he, like he, yeah, like he kind of found the word because he had been like taught it by the crew or something. Exactly, you know, because yeah. like he he doesn't swear the entire movie, and then when he swears, it's like so unconfident, and it's like it, it feels like I was taught this word like an hour ago, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like what, like funny in the moment for sure, but like logistically him saying that just felt weird yeah you know it, yeah. It, it it was the equivalent of avp requiem them going the having the woman say get to the chopper it's like okay a hundred percent yeah okay that was <laughs> well, yeah. yeah yeah we get it mm -hmm. a little, little cringy but i mean at least it was funny though in the moment um uh, well i got a few more i'll, I'll rapid fire um when mother the computer says they have 30 minutes until impact the film is in real time the impact occurs after 30 minutes which That's is sweet. cool um when rook mentions the prometheus expedition elizabeth shaw's theme plays over it so that's you know the protagonist of prometheus that's cool i always like when you bring back those light motifs like that um and then i would say the last one Obviously, there's the trying to drink milk from the dead mother's chest, and that comes back at the end. Um, and when Rain is hanging from the ship and the humanoid xenomorph is trying to crack the helmet, uh, the shot is recreated that looks like the uh, cover of Alien Isolation, the video game. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. And this movie also broke the um, it broke the tradition of the next android in a film having the next letter in the alphabet, because we had Ash, uh, Bishop oh. in Aliens and Alien Three, and then in Alien Resurrection was Call, let's see, and then in uh, Prometheus and Covenant was David, and then this movie is the first time they've broken that. Oh. Mm. They didn't need to do that. <laughs> um. They could have. They called him Edward. I mean, maybe they're like, oh, it still fits because A, Ash, you know, it didn't uh -huh. break the linear, uh, and that's what was next. Um, the uh, Here's a little, little piece of trivia that's uh, kind of worth discussing. Um, this seems to be the fastest yes. time for an alien to burst out of someone's chest. You yes. got yeah. first alien Easily. is the longest for sure. Uh, that is yeah. like is that 24 hours how long is the first alien movie it's okay like, it's not it's not so i always assumed okay this i this is what i really wanted to talk about this whole podcast yeah <laughs> because, it, because this is what i meant about the alien lore stuff okay so i want i don't at the risk of being too nerdy we're going to talk about this i do the have a theory movie, as to why it was so fast but okay i want to hear this mm -hmm. the first movie uh it's implied to be 24 hours but you can easily say like maybe it's like 
12 hours or even like let's just be uh even generous like let's just say like four to six hours because he has to sleep and then wake up right yeah i would say like yeah at least like 12 hours you know it's got to be like 12 hours because he he wakes up and then like they eat dinner you know it's like aliens it isn't a problem because i don't believe uh there's a real chest burster that occurs on screen within like the time limit um Alien 3 is a queen, so it takes several days, which makes sense because it's a, it's a more evolved form. It's larger. It takes more time to gestate. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Cool. Not contrived, in my opinion. Um, Alien Resurrection. Um, I can't remember. That one's pretty fast. Um, but I think they cloned them, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure is what people are going to say about this movie. The AVP films are where they have, like, this is under an hour um easily probably like 30 minutes i mean at the same time though like i feel like avp could have been an hour like you, it could have it could have been yeah you at least had like um some some tension relief uh in the film you know there's a pause they got their they got face hugged and then uh we moved on to something else and for a, like a good little bit and then came back to them so like at least like in your brain, you can, like, make sense of it. Like, yeah, it was faster, but, like, you know, we had a break from seeing them. I um, always assumed the Predators just engineered them somehow to be faster, but who cares? No, yeah. <laughs> Covenant and this movie... Coven Covenant was the start of it. Covenant was when it actually started to be, like, okay, yeah. I understand this is a proto-xenomorph, but this is really fast. And then this movie is, like, it's legit 10 minutes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. No. And like, uh, but then like, even like covenant was like, dude, at least like, was like feeling ill for a little bit before, like, mm -hmm. it was definitely longer than this. Yeah. This was like 10 minutes. And, yeah. And this then, is the shortest that's ever been. And this was the shortest that the face hugger has ever been on the face. And so it's like, how long does it take for the facehugger to actually put the egg in there and everything? Apparently, the facehugger instantly puts the egg in there, which makes me ask, why does it just hang out there until it dies, like, for so long traditionally? Right, right, um, exactly. Because my idea was that it once the pro it, the reason that it stays on there, the only reason it would stay on there is because it has to main ensure that you're impregnated, and then it falls off and dies like an insect because it's fulfilled its mating purpose. But mm -hmm. this movie seems to indicate, no, it just kind of... It just puts it in there and then hangs out. It just puts it in there and hangs out for a bit. Yeah, because, like, mean, one thing that I wish that they would have done is the alien that burst out of her chest is, like, a little, like, fucked up or something because it didn't have proper yeah. time. Uh, but then it was, like, a, you know... Uh, the call of nature is what forced it to come out early. It knew it was in a jeopardized state and it was in a stress state and that induced labor, you know? So it's like, you could have done something like that and it been really cool. What I think they should have done is you do that and it's not strong enough to burst out of her chest. So it makes its way up her throat and out her mouth. I think that yeah. would have been way more gnarly and a cool way to do it. Um, but, you know, they're like, but we need to do the chest thing. Um, <laughs> that's the money shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, my theory as to why it was different, because the face hugger itself was different, if you notice, because it was black. All these face huggers, oh. their skin is like charred looking. Uh, so, and so there's, there's a reason for that. Okay. Because so they, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> because, I, I'm getting excited. Yeah. Because they, because, you know, it would make sense if they tried to do the whole Alien Covenant thing. That's where they came from. But these did not come from the Alien Covenant, though. They did not just discover these, uh, these face huggers. They made these face huggers because they extracted the the goo the prometheus goo from the the xenomorph body from the original film and then you know experimented with it and, and uh fucked around and found out and uh they created uh the face huggers like not necessarily like they created the face huggers but you know they they were messing around with the goo and that's what the goo led to um 
So that could so, explain why they are able to breed so much faster too, though. Correct. So they were. This is a uh, um, kind of like a, I mean Minted. Jurassic Park. You know, it's like these are dinosaurs, but these aren't just dinosaurs. These are uh, genetically modified dinosaurs. These are genetically modified uh, face, face huggers. huggers. And that's so, why their skin's black, and they just operate differently. So because since they got the xenomorph, that uh, I, I I don't really quite like the whole thing that the xenomorph was just floating in space for twenty years, and it was still like they found it somehow. Yeah. But it was a cool little scene. <laughs> yeah, the scene was cool. The regardless, when a xenomorph it gestates inside you, it takes your DNA. So what they created from the goo was a weird hybrid uh, xenomorph and human face hugger. Mm -hmm. I don't know. know. So, Uh, I mean, uh, so yeah, it's just like... They used used, uh, some of the goo on the rat, too. You know? They did. Yeah. So this could have been some kind of, like how Brandon says, you know, how, uh, you know, uh, dinosaurs supposedly were more feathery, more Mm chicken-like. But then Jurassic Park they augmented the the dinosaurs to be more of like pre- what's the word I'm looking for? Um, reptilian. Reptilian, yeah. Because they put the they put the frog DNA in them. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe they used some of the rat DNA. It's uh, it's because they used the uh, Mark Zuckerberg's DNA in them, so they came out. As lizard people. Lizard DNA. <laughs> yeah. At first, I thought you were calling the uh, offspring at the end Mark Zuckerberg. I mean... <laughs> uh, so, Brandon, you mentioned something. Uh, what is your take on this whole uh, extended climax with... Um, you know, she injects the goo into herself and she's pregnant. So... And then we get this human... But more engineer, like kind of creature. So, um, I feel like this is also another little piece of trivia in a way. Um, Alien Resurrection, not a good movie. The mm-hmm. ending of Alien Resurrection just completely makes it not a good movie. <laughs> and in the same way, just because, like, that idea was never a good idea to be to begin with of let's have this messed up human hybrid alien which is exactly what xenomorphs already are so like why do you have to make it a oh it's a hybrid they already are what it's even more human like get the fuck out of here um (laughs) so (laughs) then it's like oh let's do it again and mm -hmm. um it really uh that ending honestly really disappointed me uh, because I love the rest of the movie so much. And then that ending was just like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I've, I've, co- I've grown to like accept it a little bit more, but like, just like in the moment I was like, yo, what? Um, I think that what they should have done if they wanted to do the engineer thing, I would have accepted it if that was 100% an engineer that came out. You know? Hmm. Like, but ultimately what the problem is with it is because it looked stupid. Like, <laughs> it, it, story-wise, sure, whatever. But it just looks stupid. I, I can't get over that fact. They so look, would you say it looks better or worse than the newborn in Resurrection? Uh, maybe worse, honestly. The new <laughs> the newborn Resurrection was maybe a little bit more ugly, but like it was at least gooey and creepy looking. This one was also creepy looking, but just goofy and stupid looking as well. So I come up, I come with the counter argument of why it looked more human. Well, it was already a human baby to start out with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we are made from engineer DNA in this universe, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and then the goo is, is more... also engineer DNA, isn't it? What's that? Well, we I mean, don't quite know sorry. exactly what the... I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. We don't entirely know what the goo is, but yeah. 
what I understand it to be is they're trying to recreate their god from like ancient times. Mm -hmm. And their god was some kind of xenomorph ish thing. And so this is like literally like the sacrament of Jesus. Like it's like the god's blood being. Ooh. Anyway, go okay. ahead, Rick. And so maybe this is why the character was more engineer human like than xenomorph. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has an idea that I don't think it was really well told and um, well explained in a film, you know. Not to mention, I think it had to be one of the most kind of left field type of things, you know. Uh, I think it would have been probably cool if the film ended with like maybe her giving birth to the egg. Uh, interesting. And then we're left with their on with there with the cliffhanger ending, you know. Yeah. The original yeah. alien. But I think since we got to see the product in, you know, the whole shebang, I just think that it was something that, you know, felt like it was like just one last attempt at trying to do that human hybrid thing and it just didn't hit as well as you know yeah. it's as we wanted it to I, I think it, what would have been great is if they went for the cliffhanger ending everybody's asleep and then it's like beep 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 there's something wrong with her camera goes over there and you see that she's given birth and it's an egg and it's like yeah. ooh, the origin on how eggs are made it's like oh yeah. shit like i would have taken yeah, that it could have been the, times over it could have been the next evolution you know mm -hmm. yeah of uh you know the alien because we saw kind of how was it elizabeth shaw's gives birth to basically the what the first face hugger correct uh kind kind yeah like a like a um a kind of weird primordial offshoot yeah. face hugger thing and then from that face hugger joining with the engineer we get a, like rough looking you know xenomorph which i think what they what they call the neomorph i think it was uh the neomorphs are in covenant um or this one was just called like the deacon was the yeah the deacon that's that what it was pointy head yeah yeah and then what sucks after that is we don't ever see what happens after that you know we're just left with you know david and elizabeth going off to the ship to find the engineer's home planet and then we don't even get that we get covenant yeah yeah um so we would have had the history of us being like left with oh a little you know part and be like what could this lead into and if they did something else we'd be like oh that's just what alien does <laughs> the the irony kind of for me about that you're they, that kind of i'm piggybacking off what you're saying yeah. is like the irony is, is that back when they weren't even trying really to do a trilogy Alien through Alien 3 is a much more connected story than this attempt to make a franchise Yeah. with Prometheus and then people reacted poorly to it being more away from those xenomorph it, elements. Yeah, it was too vague from the... It was too vague. And then yeah. Covenant was the response to that backlash, um, regardless of if you like Covenant or not. It very clearly is like, let's skip to this the end point of where the hypothetical second movie would have been. Yeah. And then now we have this, which I'm not saying it's the third film that seems like, uh, it seems like the story is less connected. It's more like, let's flesh out all these other elements, but we're not going to do the same kind of solid, um, because even if you count resurrection, technically, since we're following Ripley resurrection, it's not nearly as, strong or tight as alien through alien yeah. 3 but it still like kind of fits the uh it's contrived but it, it it's following ripley's character in a sense but these yeah, new alien crazy. movies are very much uh, david i thought was like that new what if the villain is the reoccurring elements instead of the hero mm -hmm. um but it seems like and and at this point where we're at uh, we haven't really had that yet again i should say yeah i'm genuinely curious if the ending with the that thing uh was like <laughs> was that 
Fetty Alvarez wanted to do that? Was that initially his idea, or was that Ridley Scott's idea, and Fetty um, just rolled with it? I think given the the so many references and so much um, kind of reusing elements of all the other movies, um, I do think that this maybe was a Fetty idea, but it might have been something that he knew that Scott would want to maybe be in there. Maybe he, um, maybe it's kind of like a kind of both ways. Like he wanted to do it, but he also knew that Scott would give the go ahead when he didn't to Blomkamp's. So I remember Blomkamp's was supposed to, uh, be featuring like more of like the human Xenomorph hybrid stuff, more of that Mm. stuff. So okay. I'm wondering yeah. if maybe it was a leftover uh, mm. piece of the of Alien Five that they just kind of you know took into the script. Yeah, mm. yeah, maybe because there was some there's like some um, uh, like you know pre-production art that they showed like uh, oh, that's like, right, like the human uh, alien hybrids, uh-huh. and they were more human human like like how this one was. In a sense i guess yeah kind of where we're at with the franchise is that when you create the original alien and the the design the creature the story the characters are so good it's very difficult to top that aliens we have like hundreds so we and the queen like that's how we topped it yeah a- alien three um we can't yeah, we really top it. To basics. We have to go back to basics. We just have yeah. to. There's no way we can top this. Um, Alien 4. Okay, we gotta, like, do this perverse, like, human birth from the Xenomorph. And Ripley is, like, also kind of half Xenomorph. They they keep wanting to, like, push this uh, human, more getting more to the human to kind of break down the Xenomorph when I think that you already got it perfect. But yeah. the problem is, is that we can't keep doing this unless we have variation you know they're trying to evolve the alien creature itself and mm-hmm. trying to get to that next stage and they have no idea how to do it well i they, you don't need to that's like the thing that i don't understand of like why they keep the, messing with that i think it's because we've seen we're desensitized more, yeah we're desensitized to it we've seen aliens is what ruined the whole uh alien thing because we've got yeah. to see him go down by hundreds you know Co- correct I mean, it's but no longer this it's a, i mean it's a, it's a great movie but rick's kind of right is like in a way aliens was so good but because of how it was done it it killed a lot of the fear of the xenomorph yeah which is why alien isolation the game got praised so much because it was the way it was able to capture the fear is you're in the pov and it's just one alien following you actively like mm-hmm. um you know yeah exactly and if anything like maybe they should have just made a uh, film based off of alien isolation honestly um because like i i mean i think it's just kind of it's weird to think that oh we have to change it in order to make it scary again it's like you can just treat it with the refer- reverence of it is scary and treat it like it's scary and like dial it back a little bit as far as the it being so easy to kill like in aliens um like because we do that we get stuck in the same uh boat as all of the other slasher movies the friday the 13th Mm. the halloween movies you don't have to change its genetics though like in order to make it scary again like exactly, I, the, but th- the thing the was thing is, is like, like it was scary in the film that we just watched. They they emphasized the face huggers a little bit more. So and like and that was great. Uh, and so they did it. I think but then the they underrated, changed their mind at the very end. Yeah, I I think the underrated moment for me was when, I think probably my fa- one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, in fact, and it's so brief, is when they're behind the door. And they keep pleading with Andy to open the door. Mm -hmm. But the alien is, like, aware and is waiting. And it's, like, strategically, like, planning to, like... It's almost, like, not killing her immediately to, like, let the emotions affect... This this is the thing that um, 
again about the original alien is in the original alien it seems it has this weird intelligence like something about it is way more sadistic and way more intentional and less animalistic mm -hmm. um it almost feels like it's a serial killer uh in terms yeah. of how it behaves um, and this movie captured some of that again with like it's waiting like it's it knows the emotions can affect people and it's yeah. waiting to see if they're going to open the door like it can it can wait it's fine with it yeah um yeah. that was my favorite honestly in the whole movie in a way yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a great scene um and like well so like just the the logic of we have to change it to make it scary again okay so does that you brought up serial killers i already was thinking about uh serial killers right before you said it does that mean we can't make a serial killer scary anymore because we know what serial killers are and that they're humans like we we can't ch change humans you know so it's like you can't change the behavior change the the circumstance around them and stuff like that uh you don't have to physically alter their appearance you know uh, exactly but the thing is, is if we get the same thing over and over, we tire of that as well as humans. We don't like to see the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. Look at how many times, you know, Halloween and Friday the 13th uh, try to, you know, reinvent themselves. And there's some people that are fans of those sequels, some people that just shit on them, you know. Look at it when um, on the new Friday the 13th uh, reboot, they try to make Jason a little bit more intelligent, but still keep, you know, his overall hulkiness, and people didn't like that, you know, but people also didn't like how, you know, he was the same generic slasher, you know, later on in the series. Is so, that, did people like, not like uh, Jason himself in that Friday the 13th movie, or it's not like that movie? They, there, they didn't like some... the movie, and there's some that didn't like it because it changed too much from the initial, like, concept of what Jason was. But there were, but again, yeah, Rick is right. But there were also some who did like the bow hunter Jason yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, it's like it's cool. one of those things where you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you mm -hmm. don't. It's the curse of you, franchises, right? Yeah, you just if you have a good idea, you have to shoot with it. And you know, maybe this wasn't a good idea to us, but you know, maybe to Fede and his team, you know, this was a great great idea to try to move the alien into the, the new era to do something a little different because we can, we're only going to be able to see this stalking hunting alien for so long until we're like, okay, let's do another trick for us. Do something different. I think, and again, I don't want to like blame this movie and covenant for existing, but um, I do think that Scott was trying to take us in a different direction to like change even almost the genre Mm -hmm. maybe not the genre but almost change the change the like bring something explore a different aspect of the universe yeah, and like mm -hmm. that xenomorph stuff would be able to be brought in when necessary but it didn't have to hinge the whole film on it and you know again like you're saying rick is like they were damned if they don't with prometheus even though they had that thing at the end like they had yeah. the deacon um and they were very clearly hinting, like, we're showing all these different evolutions of of stuff. Um, but people wanted the classic design. And so it, we're in this weird point where the franchise is, uh, is pulled in two different directions. Um, well, so, but then that's the thing, though, is I don't think anybody wants the Xenomorph design to change. But I've, ne I've is... never heard a, a take of somebody praising that at all. But you we know, with, with Prometheus, I think Prometheus is good, and there's cool other stuff, but it, you know, it barely touches on Xenomorphs, so you accept it. My only issue from Prometheus is that it doesn't have Xenomorphs in it. Mm. <laughs> like, and so then that's where I liked Covenant, is because it was like Prometheus, but it had Xenomorphs in it. The thing is, though, we haven't had a slew of alien movies that have come out in, like, you know... A normal release period like what we're used to for sequels like of two or three years each alien movie has been at least like a handful of years you know i think the closest one is what avp and Requiem. Requiem. The yeah one. that's the shortest release schedule between but besides times. that i think what yeah that's why it was four or five years mm -hmm. with uh with prometheus and uh alien covenant mm -hmm. 
So about five years, yeah. The thing is, now we're going to go into that spot where they're going to start ramping into doing Alien a little bit more because we have the TV, the TV series show coming out next year. Yeah, curious about that. And if and how well this movie is, how do we know that we're not going to get a Alien sequel or Alien, Alien Remus? Yeah. Isn't the the, the TV show going to be modern day? No, so That's what I heard. Okay, th- this is why I'm confused. Uh, <laughs> we can touch on this. Uh, Noah Hawley's <laughs> doing Alien Earth. It's set on Earth. It's set before the first Alien, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I thought. That's so we... annoying. It's so annoying because I thought with like AVP, we all kind of collectively agreed. Okay. This doesn't damage the timeline too much, but let's not have any more stories that are too much that are before Alien One, because mm-hmm. the company knowing about the Alien before Alien One, just like the farther back it goes, it becomes more ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but having this set a year before Alien One on Earth, and presumably there's going to be xenomorphs. I understand that like Wait, so it's set. Co- you said it's set one year before. I I believe so. It's set like a year before Alien One. That is so weird. And and so obviously like floating around out there doing his experiments. So it could it can happen, like um, because in Alien Three or sorry in Alien Resurrection, I know that's the far future, but the Earth is like just completely screwed over, um, and most of the other films take place off of Earth. But this TV show is is gonna be very interesting because uh this the romulus and this is going to decide the future of what what occurs with this uh series and with where they're going to take the the character you know in the future mm-hmm. because i think yes like a lot of us don't want the xenomorph to change but the thing is to evolve the storyline and storytelling is we need something more than that you know we can't just have the same creature be what's leading us or else we're going to be desensitized to it well yeah i would say you just need to evolve the story you don't need to evolve the creature though you need to have more to offer than to just be a slasher of the alien the 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 alien creature once the story evolves is going to get left behind and then we're going to go back to the same square where it's like you want xeno xenomorph back yeah but so here's here's also also the thing with uh like the predator movies they've yeah. they've like evolved the predator here and there and every iteration of the predator is like well that's dumb just use the original every iteration of the alien so far has been like well that's dumb just use the original so this isn't working and honestly i just 100 percent disagree with that but we <laughs> we saw an evolution we well i shouldn't say evolution we saw a de-evolution of the predator and prey yeah and i thought it was yeah, stupid I thought his <laughs> face looked dumb. Like, it should have been the other one. It wasn't dumb enough, but I think it looked dumb in comparison, especially because of CGI. But, but. <laughs> but it worked because it had a story that carried it. But also, it wasn't, like, why... Or, it wasn't distracting, though, too. It wasn't distracting okay. enough, but I was slightly disappointed. It wasn't the original design. It, like he, They barely changed it, so I accepted it, but it was like they didn't need to change it at all. And then that's the one thing with storytelling is that if you have a character that's so, you know, in the zeitgeist and so popular and you try to change it and do something a little different, you're, you're going to not, you're going to upset somebody, you know, whether, you know, it's the fans or someone that's, you know, likes just like one movie, someone's going to get upset. You're not going to make everybody happy. And I think this is the type of storytelling where, you have a character that's so popular in the zeitgeist that you need to build a story around it. But then if the story causes the character to evolve, we need to be happy to evolve the story as long as it's a good story. Well, yeah, it really just depends if the story is good when it comes down yeah. to it. Yeah. We're always going to, there's always going to be, you know, like a, like the third of always be a adjacent design that you like, but you know, every Friday the 13th, he's changed a bit the way he looked and in the way he was you know yeah cha- right. changing the look a little bit is you know that's no, whatever that's why you kind of accept it in like predator because ultimately it didn't have an effect 
Uh, it was yeah, just so like, that's what Ridley Scott tried to do with the in Prometheus, though, too. I mean, Prometheus was like look. changing it like a lot too, um, but it was like different enough. You know, it was something. It was completely different. You know, there you get you got your little alien zombie uh, that comes from the the dead guy and everything, and uh, and that's just completely different. And it's, it's it was kind of cool, you know. Um, but it's just it's completely different it's not i wouldn't even call that an evolution of the xenomorph that was just 100 percent a different thing so you know i I wouldn't call that an evolution or a de-evolution i would just call it something else entirely and it's okay to add stuff it's it's different it's a difference between adding and changing that i would call it's adding not changing i think with regards to the story that is a de-evolution of the xenomorph though because that is like our first like little you know preview of where this monster came from and you know each time it goes through evolution is where maybe you know it's gone through so many different evolutions different changes that we finally get to the xenomorph which is the you know perfect specimen regarding um yet. regarding story i feel like this TV show, from what I have heard, which to be fair is rumor, I feel like the majority of the show is going to be a different story where it's Wayland Utani is the evil corporation and it's about their machinations and this kind of cloak and dagger stuff. And then maybe in like the season, like you build it up and there's like they, they manage to get something and then at the end of the season one, you get the xenomorph. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the payoff, so that way the audience is longing to have that thing, but the story is not centered around the Xenomorph constantly doing things. It's just the Xenomorph being revealed at the end of the season. Yeah. I think that's how they're going to structure it, but, uh, you know, if I'm wrong, you know, I apologize. I was going to come back to you and bitch you out because you were wrong a year before it came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All I, right. I initially heard it was modern day. That's where I was really thrown off by it. But if it's in the future, I mean, I'll accept it a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any uh, closing thoughts for this rip to shreds? Um. Oh, I or we need to rate the movie before oh, go first. before we rate the movie. Should we rank the synthetics? Oh. Okay, like rank the rank the <laughs> all the androids in every movie. Yes, <laughs> um, I think bottom of the barrel is the Resurrections. Uh, uh, I mean, writer. Yeah, no. she she's fine. I don't have a problem with her, but like that's just it. Mm-hmm. Her, she's fine. Yeah, whatever. She's fine. I, I would say all the synthetics are, are great right. in all of yeah. in all of the aliens. I'd like I do really appreciate how it's really become like a staple of the synthetic is always a super interesting character. Like, honestly. So, uh, we're not a writer bottom cause she's not that interesting. She's okay. Uh, I would say a uh, Rook next just because he's <laughs> fan service fair. and, uh, you could, you, okay. We could put him at the bottom if we wanted to, but, uh, I'll, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll put him, we'll put him, we'll put him right here. Um, uh, I love him to death, but uh, I think I have to put Bishop next. Um, Bishop is super dope, but yeah, he's uh, not very uh, dynamic. He's, less of, an, he's, just, he's less of an arc. Yeah, there's it's not, about, there's it's not an about, arc, yeah. It's about him helping Ripley have an arc. So yeah, he's, it's true. He's less interesting but in result. He, he's great. But he is the best because he's the homie. So he is the home. If he you're if you're in the story, he's definitely <laughs> the best. Yeah. Uh, but as far as writing goes, the the tough one for me is is the next two is do I rank Ash higher because he's a more kind of subtly developed character and he's in the original, which uh, which is great, or does David edge out by having like so much focus and so much great. Uh, storytelling moments i think david to me edges him out yeah just because he kind of follows like almost like the human trajectory as well that we can mm-hmm. relate to you mm-hmm. know 
I would I would put David at the top for myself. Yeah. He is, he is he is a great um kind of fallen angel archetype in cinema yeah. in my opinion. Like the him him kind of becoming like a, a a dark god who's trying to create life was very uh compelling. Mhm. Yeah, exactly. And it, like at the same time it's like how fair is it because he really gets the most screen time in those movies and stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, so wait, what about Andy? Where does Andy go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked Andy say, a lot. Yeah, I take I did. I'd say performances story-wise, I'd say he's uh above Ash and be- below David. I really liked him. Mhm. I feel uh, like I, I really like I really liked him, but I'll put him below Ash, so third for me. Yeah. Fair. Like, honestly, like, a little bit of a tie between him and Ash, almost, but... That's fair. Yeah. All right. So what's your what's your ranking, Brandon? I, I, I'd, I'd put Ash above. Not, no, no, I'd put Ash below. I like I like Andy okay. a lot. <laughs> no, okay. I, I, what I, re- I really like the, the whole, like, how Andy just changes uh, when he yeah. gets the new directive. That... That is such a cool little uh, storytelling technique right there. That's like that's awesome. I love that. Were, um, the actor was amazing. Mm-hmm, yeah, he did great. Like, like he he how he was able some to sort of reward. back and forth between the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they were able to have their cake and eat it too. They had like the android who was ardently on their side, but also like, is he gonna go evil? And they kind of like were able to ride that middle point between both archetypes of the android in the series. He's uh, like he he's you know. like rebooting, glitching. He's got Bishop on one shoulder and and uh, <laughs> Ash on the other. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, so, I what think we, your, we what is your rating on the movie, Brandon? Oh. Mm. <laughs> I mean, do you, I want <laughs> maybe a, a three out of five? Like, if, if we can go like three point five, but you mm-hmm. know, if I have to commit, yeah. then it would be a three, just because uh, the the CGI Ash really took me out of it during. Mm-hmm. just looking at his stupid face uh <laughs> and and then uh monstrosity engineer just looking at his stupid face um i think like ultimately what would have fixed the film is uh she gives birth to the pred alien uh and then it ends <laughs> um it's the same shot from avp but it's just her face cgi'd onto the predator yeah yeah it's a, it's an engineer's face on <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean that's uh, essentially what it looked like was a little thing coming out um, yeah yeah uh I did thoroughly enjoy it, um, but yeah, just those those little problems here and there, and then uh, not a fan of necessarily how quick uh, the chest burster came out. Um, so yeah, there's just those little things here and there that, that take it down to, to three out of five. But but it's like it is one of those things where I still really liked it. There's just those those weights that just kind of pull it down mm. for me, you know? So it's like, if somebody is like, oh, five out of five, like, loved it, absolutely. I'm in all support for that. I am not going to mm-hmm. argue with that person and tell them they're wrong. Because it's like, I love it that you loved it, and I wish that I loved it 100%, you know? But I still loved it, just a three out of five, <laughs> as far as, like, trying to be critical about it. It's the hard part about ranking uh, rating things, you know. Ooh. Um, Rick, do you want to go first or shall I? I can go first if you want. All right, go ahead. Um, I thought it was a really good movie. It was, you know, something that kept me entertained. It kept me in suspense. It did everything that I wanted an alien movie to do for years. Um, it didn't try to overtell any of the like evolution aspects that you know. Uh, that sometimes it's fell down like in a you know um, resurrection it didn't try to jam down 
um, a story that was like needless and overarching theme for the thing. It had a simple theme. It was, you know, brotherhood and siblings, you know, the whole idea. It was simple. Um, it kept me entertained. Everybody that I was in the theater with was jumping every five seconds from, you know, fright, which is cool. A um, few things I didn't like is it felt like it, um, it would peak and then it would slowly just fall down, fall down, fall down, it would peak and fall down. So it was a little uneven on the, like, um, uh, of uh you know the um pacing was a little uneven just a little bit because there i would be like in the moment and then everything would stop and i know that i understand that's like you know to give us like a breath for you know to ca let us catch our breath but sometimes you know it would hold on to that for a little too long and then i would get out of the moment and then something would happen and i'd have to, i wouldn't be able to get into the moment until like you know halfway through the scene the next scene but um, like I said, I really, I really thought it was a good movie. Um, I'd give it seven and a half offsprings out of ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this one's really interesting for me. My it it is it is possibly uh, one of the thing of the Alien franchise is that for the most part uh, they're all very um, they all have something interesting. Like they're never um, to me they're never um, boring um this is a very entertaining movie um uh i think that the if i'm i think what i'm gonna have to give it is a is a three and a half out of five that may go to a three but i think a three and a half out of five is what i'll give it uh, and it's for one specific reason is that if i'm looking at what the the heart of what the movie is about which is andy and rain and their relationship and Romulus and Remus and the Brotherhood and and all of that. The core of that story, as it is written structurally, works and it pays off. And the characters go through their arcs and that is not um, damaged. So I would say on that basis it has to be a three and a half. It's more than it's more than solid. It succeeds. Mm -hmm. um, well, that being said. Uh, as I've brought up throughout the podcast and as Brandon said and as you have said Rick is that there's a lot of things that just uh, weigh it down for me uh, the the I understand that this is a larger ethical thing but the Ian Holm shit really like it doesn't if, if it was perfect it would still be weird like if the CGI was perfect which it isn't it's it's very bad in places it's pr criminally bad in, in some places um, were it perfect I would still feel weird about it um, so that being the case, um, that weighs it down. Um, some of the lore things. The ending bit with the human hybrid, I honestly liked, I think, more than you guys did. To me, that um, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, uh, effectively creepy at points. Um, did the movie need it? Not necessarily. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just all, there's like these little things like that. Some of the things like... Uh, them finding the xenomorph from the first movie in space when they could have just <laughs> found another one somewhere like it didn't need to be so directly call questions to like the ending of the first movie um yeah. there, um, there's a lot of references it's a very modern movie in that way it's it's trying to get you to point and oh there's the bird dipping into the water and that kind of stuff um but you know overall it's it's effectively done and so i think three and a half stars where I'd rank it in the movies, uh, how I'm feeling right now is Alien, Aliens, Prometheus, this movie, Alien 3, Covenant, Resurrection, uh, AVP, Resurrection, AVP, Requiem. That's how I'd rank it. Fair. So it's, it's, it's about fourth right now. Might go to fifth. Yeah. I agree on the rankings swap aliens and prometheus for me oh you like prometheus more than aliens that's cool yeah. oh really okay wow. i can re i can respect that, that i can respect okay that. i what well, what's funny is like literally before you know the big third act surprise mm -hmm. i literally had a thought in my head i was like this was like the third best alien movie and then like that <laughs> happened i was like this is like the sixth best alien movie <laughs> <laughs> It's funny how that works, you know, like, yeah. so much of a movie can be, like, 
and then you and then something about it for you just like craters it, you know? Yeah. Mm, yeah. This is like exactly. my favorite movie ever. Now it's not. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a I have a feeling that once I revisit Alien Three, this will probably go below that. I think it's slightly oh, uh, it's really tough. I think there's there's so much like great so for me like Covenant, it's like half a brilliant movie and half like a B movie almost like not quite A V P Requiem, but yeah. like like it's like half brilliant half b movie not criticizing b movies just that that's how it feels and uh, so this this and covenant are like feel very similar to me they have a lot of the same peaks and valleys in terms of mm -hmm. quality um that's fair and i need to revisit all of them what, uh, what's funny is uh they're they're very similar and what what do they mainly share in common the ai is what carries the film right right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, like, you know, I understand it's different because Michael Fassbender is alive. But when you look at the execution of Ian Holmbot, Rook, versus how they simply and perfectly did the two Michael Fassbender panning shot, like the circle shot around them, it, that's not even a comparison. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. It also makes you think if that was like a late, you know, late call to put it into the movie but like you said earlier that he had been in touch with the family for a while mm -hmm. so it makes you think like does a while mean a few months before they decided to do it or before they started shooting or what you know yeah yeah where did this idea come from or is I heard it, it is... i heard it fede says that ridley scott came up with it yeah. so did they have like a different, you know, face for the android and they CGI'd over it? Is that why it mm -hmm. looks so bad? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um No, yeah, that was that was one thought is like was it supposed to be something else and then they decided to change mm -hmm. it after the fact. Lance um, Henriksen is like raging like wherever he is. He's like <laughs> God, yeah. it was my best performance as bishop. Yeah. <laughs> and then they made a that would have been wild. That would have been kind of cool, though. Like, have him in the same... Like, have Bishop in the same outfit as Ash. Like, because it's like... Yeah, that would have been a good... Like, that would have been pretty cool. Um, yeah. the, the thing is, is I feel like there's, like, they're, like, biased. They're like, well, Lance Henriksen got Alien, Alien 3, and then he was also in AVP as yeah. young Wayland. Well, I think so that would have been fair. a... That would be... If that's actually, like, their thought process of like the people who made the film's thought process i think that's really dumb because it's like he's almost as iconic as the xenomorph not you know especially yeah. now that so many movies have come out since um but it's like people would have loved to see bishop you know that would have been awesome um but yeah <laughs> Ooh, all right we could we could talk about this all day let's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough <laughs> all right guys well I think all we have left to say is for you guys to like, subscribe, comment, and tell us how dumb our opinions are, because we like that. We like to have conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell us and, how we're know, factually wrong about our opinions. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're factually, and we're making generalizations when we're talking about something. Please tell us about, <laughs> tell us more. <laughs> um, but the until next time. at the end was a woman, not a man. Sorry. <laughs> why, 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 why do we have to gender the offspring? Yeah, uh -huh. we, sh we shouldn't. Huh? We shouldn't. That's a they That's... them engineer. Yeah. Oh, jeez. We're definitely getting canceled now. <laughs> no, cut that out. <laughs> yeah. uh, until next time, guys. We'll see you later before we get canceled even faster. Bye, 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 bye. 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 <laughs>